from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. What is she doing? I never know what she's doing. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Phil, you're on with the professor. Hello. Hey, Dad. How are you? Great. Uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, say you are a god among men, and I wanted to appreciate you for the public service that you provide to all of us men out here. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so I have a question for you. I need uh, I need your advice. Uh, I want to know, of all the women you've slept with and, and, and all the fun times you've had, what have you found? What is your best piece of advice for spending the least amount of money, the least amount of time, when you meeting a woman at a bar or a club to, have, to, have to sleep with her? Well, when I go to bars, I do not approach women, ever. I step up to the bar. Um, I'm dressed to go out for the evening. I step up to the bar. And when I am there, I engage in conversation with the bartender. Okay. And I give everyone the impression... Whether whether it's a man or a woman, right? No, I'll talk to guys if they want to talk about the Dodger game, or they want to talk about the Angel game, or they want to talk about Monday Night Football. That'll be fine. But I don't start conversations with chicks. I want okay. women to understand that I'm not desperate to meet chicks. I'm not at the bar desperate to meet chicks. And therefore, I'm not desperate enough to spend money on them or waste my time paying attention to them if nothing's going to come of it. Okay. So what happens is, if I look like I'm there with a purpose... If I look like I'm at a bar and I've got things to do, like I'm going to meet a friend there, I'm going to be watching a game there, uh, and, and I'm talking about meat market type places, eventually right. women start coming up to you and they start and they do this with me all the time. They say, uh, uh, you, what are you doing here? You, you, you look like you're alone. What are you doing here? They start asking. Mm-hmm. Now you've got them where you want them because now they have approached you. The minute you approach a woman and start asking her what her sign is or start using cute opening lines on them, now they've got you where they want you, begging for their attention. Right. You have to turn it around and make them beg you for your attention. So would you just attempt to blow them off? No, you don't blow them off, but you give your attention grudgingly. In other words, uh, you don't uh, give her the idea that you're finally relieved that a chick talked to you. You give her the idea that uh, you have other things to do. That's why you're there. You'll talk to her while you're there waiting for your buddy to show up, but uh, that's why you're there. Right, okay. Now Never what, give what, her the idea that you went out looking to get laid because women women want to get laid by people who don't want to get laid. That's what they want. If, <laughs> if you are going to reject them, they are going to want you. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more there. Now, my question is, what's the best way for you to, for you to get her back to your place that you found? Well, first of all, I don't want to get her back to my place. I want to be back at her place. Okay. And uh, one of the ways to do that is if she's had a little too much to drink, is to offer to take her home. Okay. That's the easiest way to get into a chick's place. You want to find out if she needs a ride home. Okay, and then if she says she doesn't, then basically she just you, you, you move on to a different one. Move on. Don't waste your time. It's it's all about volume. You've got to spread the mantra among as many women as possible. Okay, now I and be prepared question. to be turned down nine out of ten times, and that's fine. Right. You know, okay. with direct with direct mail, they send out a hundred pieces of spam, and if they get two responses out of a hundred spam emails. 
that's considered to be a, a, a whopping success. Okay. So you just be prepared. You just spread, you know, throw as much of it against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, hit as many balls as you can, see which ones go out of the park. That's right. Um, one more question. What, what's the best place you found to meet women, besides, besides the bar, obviously? Well, the best way to meet women is to, to, to be at uh, things that are not obviously meat markets. Right. Uh, okay. To do things that you like doing. Uh, where there might be women interested in doing them too. So yeah, among uh, alcohol involved, there should always be alcohol involved. Whether it's something sophisticated like a wine dinner or a wine tasting, you know what? You, by the way, you know what attracts scads of chicks? What, what, any what of these? Not? Any of these wine events? I went to one of these wine events at the Roosevelt Hotel one time. It, huh? There was so much talent you couldn't stand it. Really. Yeah, because, you know, chicks love to say, well, I don't like booze, you know, I like wine, I like Merlot, I, like, I don't like... And these chicks are, like, generally among the hotter uh, chicks that are out there. And, of course, they, women love plausible deniability, as Oliver North once said. They love saying, well, I was just going to taste some wine, and one thing led to another, and I saw this guy, and he was looking at me, and was like... <laughs> women don't want to go to meat markets. They don't want to appear desperate to meet you. And you don't want to appear desperate to meet them. So what you need to do, you need to, uh, you know, be at an event like that. Uh, now, or now, any... I, know you, I know you oppose dating older women. What would you, because I'm 22 years old, what would you, what would you say? Oh, to I'm not, if you're 23, time? I am not opposed to cougars and milfs and gilfs. You know, all, you know, let's face it. Um, having sex for a man is like going to the toilet. Right. I mean, when you got to go, you got to go. Uh, you know, if you found a urinal that was 50 years old, uh, you, that would not stop you from using it. You'd prefer a younger urinal, but uh, if it was old and had a few cracks in it, uh, you, 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 when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah, as long as it makes for a good story and there's no kids involved, right? That, exactly right. All right, Tom. Hey, I appreciate all your advice. Can you uh, take me out with a bong rip, please? I certainly can, Phil. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Mark on Like Us One Hundred One with your professor. Hello, Tom. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I've been meeting all these chicks, and I don't necessarily know what the appropriate amount of time to call them. Well, a minimum of one week. Minimum of one week. Jeez. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you are too busy. You have so much action. Your social life and your calendar are so booked. You don't have time. Did you ever see the movie Swingers? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. You should. Because there's a scene in it that will remind you probably of you. It has a guy, this is about guys who come to L.A. to get in the acting business, but really, uh, they're, they're never going to make it as actors. They, they just, if they're lucky, they'll get laid, and they, here they are around L.A. as unemployed actors trying to get laid. And this one guy finally goes to a bar with his buddies, and he meets a chick at the bar, and he gets her number written on a cocktail napkin, and he finally has, you know, scored a phone number. And so at the end of the night, when his buddies go home, it's 2.30 a.m., and he comes into his apartment, and he sits down, and then he's looking at the clock, and it's 2.30 a.m., and then he looks at the cocktail napkin, and suddenly the guy gets up and starts dialing this chick up immediately. And then you will see in the scene in the movie, the guy calls, and then calls again, and then calls again, and you see the result of when you do that kind of thing. You want to appear to have lots of irons in the fire. And calling chicks right back says, I got nothing going on in my life. Huh. Like, it seems like the ones I do meet, I mean, I'll give it like three or four days. And I just need to stretch it out more, which... Yes. Huh. All right. It's, uh, it's good stuff, Tom. Um I didn't, I didn't know idea that Thursday nights was when you gave your lessons. But oh, yeah. Every Thursday at this time. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, I missed you when you came to Dallas, and uh, I'll just have to get you again. Well, we'll be back. I'm going to get that Gavin Spittle to pay for another trip because he owes me. <laughs> All right, Professor. Can you uh, take me out old school? 
Here you go, Mark. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Caesar on the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. Hello. Yeah, man, look, I got this problem situation with my girl. Yeah. You know, like, she has to wait, 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 so, wait. Let's start with this. You're 24 and you have a girlfriend. Yeah. Strike one. Strike years. one. Oh, and you've been with her for six years since you were 18. Strike two, okay? Oh, right. Go ahead. Uh-huh. So, yeah, put it away like, she nags too much, and I'm like, should I just move on or should I just stay with the chick? Because, you know, she's been with me for the tough and, you know, for everything, put it that way. Let's, uh, let's point some other facts out that you've left out. You told them to Dean, but you didn't tell them to me. Oh, man, like, pretty much is everything, you know, I... She's I, a, she's wait, really, wait, she's a single mother? Yeah, she's a single mother. Yeah, how many kids does she have? She has three, three from, three different daddies. Three uh, daddies. <laughs> why you left that out? I know. You don't I think that's a, a you don't think that's you, a buddy. big, you don't think that's a big red flag? Nah, I'm not telling you the truth. She treats me good sometimes. She treats me bad Ugh. when she does nag. Jesus. And, I just do and let's get to another point here. You're 24. How old is she? She's 32. 32? 32. 32. Eight years older than you? Yep. Why? See, but I, ru I run things at my house, so that's the thing. But no, you don't. No, you don't, because she nags you. You don't run anything. Well, she nags, but I run. You I don't say, run. But... Don't no, pal. I'm not. I'm not going to let you get away with this. You run nothing. If she's nagging you, it's because she's driving the bus. Oh, the bus. She's Ooh. driving the bus. Yeah, I used to call you. that the magic bus when we were on one. That crazy. She's driving the bus, and you are a passenger. Uh huh. Don't you tell me you run everything. You t you save that for your buddies. But you're not going to fool me. You are you are the victim here. You are not in control of anything. Yep. Are I you? Mean, like, are you? I, I, I go off the Are you? Are you? You are not in control of anything, are you? Oh, I am. I am. What are you? In, what exactly are you in control of? Um, pretty much they're in control of the whole household. So that way, you know. Like, really? So when she's nagging you, how could she nag you if you're in control? Because. Uh, to tell you the truth, you know, it's a real hard question to answer, you know? Yeah, because you're lying to me. Let me tell you something, pal. If you're in control of everything, here's what you do. You say to her, didn't you forget who's in control of everything here, bitch? I don't even call her by her first name anymore. Well, that's isn't that a, that's a wonderful relationship. Your girlfriend, who's eight years older than you and has three different kids from three different fathers, and who nags you all the time, and her name is Bitch. That's a great relationship. Why don't you marry her? For what, man? I, I got too much things on my mind to, to marry her. What, I mean, well, then, she, for, for 30, for well, what are you years? calling me about? You don't want any advice from me. You think you're doing everything right. You're in control. You're running everything in your house. What did you call for? Well, I just called you to tell you, like, should I date other women and still be with her, or should I just... There are her? no girlfriends in my world, do you understand? And she's living with you, too, right? Oh, she's on the other line calling me right now, too. I'll bet she is. Does she live with you? What happened? Does she live with you? Yeah, she lives with me. <laughs> there you go. I think we know who runs everything in your house. Uh. Oh, yeah. Right, in fact, right now, you're all distracted and nervous because she's probably hearing you on the radio and you're afraid of what she's going to say. I wish the bitch would hear me on the radio. Poochie. She is hearing you on the radio and you're afraid. Nah, hell no, nah, not nobody. me. I'm the boss at my house, Mr. Macho. I'm the boss I, at my house. I'm the king. Sure you are. Poochie. You know what? No, you know what? Nobody nags me at my house, Caesar, because I am the boss at my house. There is a zero tolerance policy. The minute somebody nags me, they're gone. You pay the cost to be the boss? Do I what? Do you pay the cost to be the boss? Nobody lives with me, Caesar. Why not? Nobody lives with me. Do you understand? Nobody. Why is that? Because I don't need anybody living in my house. If I want to have sex with somebody, I'll have sex with them. If I want to have a relationship with somebody, I'll have a relationship with somebody who has their own place. But that's without paying them, right? I don't pay anybody anything. You sure? 
I'll bet you're paying. To tell you the truth, this is my first time calling, and this is my first time listening to you. And you, you, know, you, you, you get to a point, you know, but there's things that, that you, when you say that, it doesn't, doesn't make sense for that way. You know, sure it doesn't. Well, it. then you must be as happy as a clam. Oh, I, I'm not happy. I'm just, I'm living the life. Oh, you're living the life, but you're not happy. <clears throat> you're an idiot, pal. You're an idiot. I'm telling you, you're an idiot. Some like it. Some like it. 1-800-5800-TOP. You're giving these guys way too long. Three days to get the panties. You have one day to do it, and I'm a long-time listener. <laughs> 99, I give them one day. That's it. And then it's three days. If they don't want to give me the panties in the first day, out the door. Out Good the for you. Door. Good for you. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. Tom Likas Show, Likas 101, I am your professor, at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Damon of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing? Great. Good. Listen, uh, I wanted to let you know, big time fan, uh, but here's my uh, dilemma with getting laid. You know, I'm 21, I'm a fairly attractive guy, you know, but, like, quite often I get labeled as, like, a nice guy, and I'm kind of wondering if you could help me out with how to break that. Are you a nice guy? Uh, yes, I've gotten my fair share of ass, but it's mostly been with, like, girls that I've dated or just, like, you know, one-night stands. Yeah, you can't have sex with anyone unless you are their boyfriend, right? Uh, you know, it's been like that, and I'm just kind of wondering how I could, you know, moving forward, get away from that, you know what I'm saying? Well, you have to stop caring about what women think. Yeah, you know, like, I was raised, like, without, like, a father. Well, my father wasn't, like, dead or anything. It's like, my dad's, like, a big Christian guy, so, like, I could never really go to him with, like, how to get laid with chicks. And, you know, I didn't really grow up with him. I grew up with, like, a single mom, so, like... And really, and your like, single mom told you your dad was, what, a jerk? Oh, no, my parents have always been, like, you know, cool with each other. It's never been, like, anything bad like that. I just, I grew up with my mom, like, going to, you know, living, like, living with her. And, and your I, mom told you to be a gentleman and be nice to girls and do the right thing and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, whatever your instincts tell you to do, you should be doing the opposite. Like, give me a for instance. Like, uh, when you think you should be sending flowers, don't. Don't do that. No. When you think you should be sending a gift, don't. Okay, so you're just basically preaching what I've heard in the past, which is... You want to get laid, you're more of a jerk than a friend. Right? That's correct. All right. So here's you know, the guys like you are the kind that women label marriage material. All right. All right. Okay. But you know what marriage material is opposed to? Guys who they like having sex with. All right. So here's a question I got for you. Um, when it's like, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a chick, like, I don't want to bring up some conversation that's going to be like, you know, not really trying to, like... Get, like I'm trying to get laid, so I'm trying to. What kind of conversation should I? Yeah. Well, first of all, we have a zero tolerance policy. You can't use that word. You're out! Now the p word can't be used um, in that context on the radio. Having said that, look. Bottom line, uh, you know what you want to do is. It doesn't matter if a chick thinks you're out to get sex. You are out to get sex. You're a guy. <laughs> bottom line. You know, you want to be uh, somebody who talks dirty, who wants to get laid, and who makes no secret of it. You're not afraid because you're a man. You're not afraid. Not afraid to say that's what you want. Because that's what guys who get laid do. They whisper vulgar things in chicks' ears and they their ears curl. And then they go home with you. All right, now we have Chris calling in. And Chris has called before, and he told us about his problem, and I gave him a solution. Now he's calling with an update. Uh, but before Chris gives us the update, Chris is going to tell us what we talked about the first time, so you'll be up to date on which Chris we're talking about and what this is all about. How's it going, Chris? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Remind everybody what our conversation was about. Well, I have a 35-year-old girlfriend who had four kids. Um... I was in the military, and she always uh, 
wanted to talk to all the guys on her MySpace and uh, all on the phone or everything. And uh, if I talk to any women uh, or anybody, she'd get all mad and upset and tell me I couldn't do it, but she could. Uh, she wanted me to pay all the bills and why she sat at home or went back to school. Now, of course, I didn't mind none of that, but, of course, you said that was wrong on me. <laughs> so I did um, indeed. And so what did I tell you to do? You told me that I needed to leave her, but uh, first talk to an attorney since I was with her for about I was with her for forty years. So you told me to talk to an attorney first, and then uh, and then leave her. So uh, I talked to an attorney. Um, we were common law married, but uh, the, the, she, she didn't hold me to nothing. I didn't sign over no uh, thing saying that uh, the kids were mine. Because uh, they, they were all they were by a different dad, so uh, she had no legal right to hold me responsible for her kids, so I couldn't pay child support. So then I uh, went home uh, from work on a Monday and um, told her that uh, she. Uh, well, first I called my my landlord, who I had the uh, the lease through in my house. Told him I was going to move out. Uh, that to uh, in, in the lease I will. Uh, Pay the difference, the uh, whatever, the whatever uh, it, I had to pay to break to break my lease, and then she was going to stay there for a month. I told went home, told her that uh, she had uh, one month to get out of the house. I was packing my stuff and uh, I was moving out and not to call me again. And I was tired of her BS and uh, tired of her childish games, tired of the way she was cheating, which she probably was, and just never told me. So I moved out and got me another place. Wait, 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 wait. How did she react when you told her that? Oh, she, she, she was very, very ticked off. Ah. She, said that, she said that she didn't deserve this, uh, that uh, that it, it was all a misunderstanding, that uh, she don't see why she couldn't talk to nobody, uh, why uh, why if, uh, if, if, I, if I was had a problem, why I didn't just come to her instead of going to you. You did go to her. Yeah. You went to her, and she said that she could do it, but you couldn't. All right. I went to her many times and, and told her that, hey, if you're going to do this, I'm, I'm going to do it. And then she and they always just said, well, if you do it, then that's cheating. Well, okay, well, if it's cheating for me, it's cheating for you, too. So, then, so after I got my place, uh, she actually found out where I lived and came over. Because she wanted me to pay her car payment, <laughs> and, and I, I, I told her I didn't have the money. I just bought a uh, Xbox 360 and a PS3, and then a, a, a 42 inch plasma screen TV. I said, "Here's all my money. <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't play your play, play your car payment." <laughs> How did you react to that? Oh, uh, she, she, she was very pissed off. <laughs> That's exactly what she deserved. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, b before I find out uh, you, the final question from you, I have the next to last question. Now, you went to see an attorney, as I advised you. Did you feel better about it when you walked out of the attorney's office? Did you have more confidence? Were you glad you did that? Yeah. That way, uh, if there was some legal actions that she could have done, that uh, that she could have done before, at least I found out that there was nothing she could have done. And instead of finding out after I kicked her out and done all this, he told you the way to do it. He told you uh, how to evict her. What's that? And he told you how to evict her from the premises, and you did that. Yeah. And he, told was, me, he told me that uh, since we're just coming along married, that uh, I could uh, go ahead and break my lease with my landlord, and let, give her a month's notice, and just tell the landlord that I'm moving out, that she'd be living there for a month still, and that way she had her month's notice. And Boy, exactly I love I I gotta love Texas. I gotta tell you something. <clears throat> Texas Texas for a married man is heaven. Yeah. And for a man who's not married, but uh, uh, you know, with these women threatening ta palimony and stuff, and threatening all kinds of stuff, and not getting out of your house, Texas is just the best. <clears throat> I totally love it. So, how have you been enjoying your new freedom? Ah. Uh I'm doing what I want, even though I've been sick for the past couple of days. But oh, 
I'm just doing my normal thing still. It's still going to work every day. Just looks like nothing's changed. I really can't go out and party nut. So I got the strep throat. But or you know how it is working out in the rain, you get real sick. But other than that, once I get better from this, I'm going to go out and spend my next paycheck just going to a bar and just having a good old time. And you don't have kids around you all the time and all that noise? Yep. Probably, How great is that? Three hours of sleep. How great is that? Oh, it's great. I love it. And now you get to keep all your money and spend it on yourself. Yep. I also love it when that, that day I that day I called that girl was wanting my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I tried to call back that day, but I couldn't get through. Oh, what a shame. I know. She's kind of cute, too. <laughs> I think we could have hooked you up. I know, but I couldn't get through. I Well, you know, nobody wants to eat at an empty restaurant, Chris. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I got to tell you something. Now, I, I, I got to find out one final thing from you, and okay. that is, where, where did she end up? Where did she end up? Yeah. Uh, she's at the house right now. She's got till the end of the month to get out. And where she goes from there, I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> and is uh, ever since she asked for the car payment, have you heard from her again? Uh, yeah, she tried to call me this morning, but uh, I was too busy playing my uh, video games to answer the phone. <laughs> How great is that? So that I, I, I got to work and I text her. I'm sorry, Mr. Phone. I'm just been asleep. I I totally love that. Well, well Chris, it all sounds good to me, and you sound like one satisfied customer. I am. I appreciate it, Tom. Good for you, Chris. I'm proud of you. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Mike? No, Hello, you're Mike. Tom? I'm yes. sorry about that, Tom. I've just been waiting for a while. I just uh, called you because uh, I, your Hail Mary theory worked, sir. Tell us what happened. Uh, well, I'm 24 years old, going to medical school, and uh, you know my father always taught me that when I was going to be intimate with a wolf and wear a condom, just like you, I listened to you faithfully, and uh, I just uh, I wore a condom, but she still got pregnant. Uh, this is one of she's not my girlfriend, just one of you know one of the rotation, but I just uh, I got really nervous. I didn't know what to do until I heard to talk about the the hail mary. And I, I figured, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. My dad told me, you know, I was going to have to be responsible because she didn't want to take, she didn't want to get in the bomb, get rid of the kid. So I talked to her, I, I talked to her, I told her, you know what, uh, I want to, I want to be, I want to be able to provide you with a house and a, and a, and a car and get you everything you need, but I can't do that unless I finish school. I, I need you to, you know, I need you to, to trust me and, and be with me in this. And I was, I was nervous when I was doing it, man, but, um, it took me like two or three times, two, two or three tries to convince her, and she finally accepted, man. And and it just happened this uh, this last week, and uh, I'm just so relieved now. Uh, I broke up with her on Sunday. Did you get her the egg McMuffin? Excuse me. Did you get her the egg McMuffin? What is it? Uh, oh <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, did you? Just... But you dumped her. How did she react when you dumped her? Well, she was. She did the whole waterworks thing. The, the crying, the, the the begging me, you lied to me. She she called me every single bad word in the dictionary. Uh, she told me I was good for nothing, scum. That she was gonna get her revenge. And I told her, she's like, well, I'm gonna sue you. I was like, well, you know what? I, I don't think I did anything wrong legally. So later, and I hung up. <laughs> so yeah, but I just wanted to share that with you because uh, you know you you speak the truth, and um, you know one of the guys out there have to listen to you because. Even if it's a long shot, at least it's a shot, you know? Give it a shot. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you very much, Tom. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Uh, Tom Likas here, your professor of Likas 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. 
tomorrow. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes. It's the new fall semester. Likas 101 and, of course, wide open telephones every Friday on the Tom Likas show. So be here for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dave. Long time, first time. Thank you. Uh, man, this is a toughie for me. Um, I was kind of reluctant to call you at first, but I need your advice. So what, what I was, uh, what the problem that I'm having right now is that I caught my lady or my wife cheating on me by, she was texting another guy behind my back and she denied it to me. She lied. And so what happened was, is that I had a gut feeling something was going on, and I finally told, uh, told I confronted her. I said, "Are you cheating on me?" And she said, "No." And I, um, I followed her texts, and sure enough, she, uh, she was uh, texting another guy, get, getting some uh, personal information for him. And it started off innocently, and then it uh, kind of escalated from there. And so I'd say yesterday, she broke down. And she um, confessed to me that she did. She said she apologized for it. She confessed to, to having sex with the guy? Like like phone sex type, t texting sex. Right. So not necessarily um, actually going at it. So what, what she confessed, she said she was sorry, she can't change it. And so that, that really pissed me off. And I, I said, you know what, we're done. <laughs> we're done, that's it. And so what, what happened after that was is that um, she said, so how are we going to work this out now? Because we're, we're currently renting a house in, uh, in Westlake. And uh, I said, so are we going to stay in the house under the same roof? Or are we going to move out? What's the story? And then so what happened was is that um, um, she said, stay, stay, but I won't be staying in the same room with you. So she moved out. She moved into the spare bedroom. I stayed in the master bedroom, and I said, no, nah, that's not going to work. So I, I started uh, staying in other places. I never, I haven't been staying in the same house since. And so today I, I moved out. I moved all my stuff out because I caught her. She, um, she pretty much wiped out my account. She took all her uh, personal belongings, like all her um, bank statements, uh, files, and and uh, whatnot, and I confronted her about that, and um, I said, you got you got to understand, that makes you look very suspicious and fishy about it, and she got all pissed off about it. So, Tom, I need your advice. Well, what I'm sure she's got an attorney, and that's why she did that. No, she, I she told me that um, she was only get, getting advice from an attorney, and I got advice from an attorney as well, and she now she's saying that she wants to... Um, uh, do a mediator because she doesn't want to have to spend all those thousands of dollars in attorney fees. Well, who could afford it better, you or her? She could. Oh, really? She's she's pretty, she is the uh, she makes more than I do. Well, maybe yeah, uh, you should get a judge to say that she has to pay your attorney's fees. That's kind of hard to do because when I talked to the attorney the other day, he told me that um, it's going to be a little difficult to do because of the fact that we've only been married for two years. Well, the attorney knows better than I do, and uh, well, uh, certainly. Uh, do you have any uh, assets together? You have no we house. Don't, we, we don't have. She, a whole she emptied lot the of, bank uh, account. Assets together because of the fact that we've only been married for two years. We have uh, investments. We have a timeshare. We we have no kids, no no pets, just uh, small investments hit here and there. Okay, so there isn't much to split up. Uh, other than furniture and uh, other small mis and miscellaneous stuff, no. I mean, the timeshare. The timeshare. You've got zero equity. Probably, it's worth zero. It's it's building up, but yeah, it's it's a fairly new timeshare. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, uh, do you know anybody who's making big money buying timeshares and flipping them? Not really. Yeah, uh, believe me, that's because the value of them doesn't go up. It generally goes way down. That's right. That, that's why we're kind of uh, deciding whether or not do we keep that, do we sell it. or The, the, the bottom line is that I don't want to have to get uh, screwed by her, literally. And so what she's doing, she's uh, going. I think she's going behind my back and um, 
doing these other stuff, get, getting advice, um, uh, just taking everything out, wiping out my, the bank account, taking all her files, and she's, she keeps coming back to me and saying it's all innocent. Now, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I've been divorced four times. The attorney told her to wipe out every account. That's what I asked her. I, I said, how well, do you, you know? think she's going to wait? Wait, do you think she's going to tell you what the attorney told her? No, I mean, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I confronted her about that. How do you think I feel? You, you could be going behind my back and telling me, hey, you know what? Or the attorney telling you, hey, wipe out the account, take, take everything out. Uh, don't, don't leave anything behind that, that he can use against you. Uh, he, he could be telling her all these stuff and, and I wouldn't even know it. And that's probably what's happening. And you understand, you had equal right to uh, polish off those accounts, uh, but your attorney was not as quick on the draw, or she hired an attorney before you did. I, we, we haven't hired one yet. We, uh, she's, we, if she's getting advice from an attorney, that's as good as hiring one. It does, if the guy's giving her free advice, he's still her attorney for all intents and purposes. Tom, I'm, I'm in a tight spot here. I, I, I need... Uh... I need the, the the advice. Well, my advice to you is to get an attorney. That's probably the best bet, isn't it? Well, I mean, look, if you don't have a lot of property to split and you're not afraid of paying vagina money or child support or anything like that, you can certainly go for a mediator. But uh, first things first, you're entitled to half of what's in that bank account. Exactly. But, but what she's coming back to telling me is that she... Um, she was. Uh, she made all that money. I didn't put any money into the investments. It's uh, none of that, that, it doesn't matter when you get married. It's 50-50. Do you have a prenup? No. Nope. It's 50-50. That's what I was afraid of. I mean, she certainly wasn't afraid of you putting any money. Why didn't she just say, well, I'm playing on keeping all this stuff so you don't put any money in? Well, I, I put money in and then other uh, small, um, uh, like, uh, savings. You know what? It's 50-50. California is a community property state. You're right. You own half of everything. That's that. And women use that against men all the time. Don't you let her talk you out of that. And and so now should I just continue to move all, all my stuff out? Because she wants me to uh, not, not move the stuff out. <laughs> Look, pal. You need to start your new life. And you don't want her looking into your cell phone or looking into your computer. You don't want her going through your pants pockets looking for receipts or any evidence. She's already taken all the paperwork. Tom, you are so right. You are so right. And I, sh I should have listened before. I told you don't get married, Dave. I probably will not be doing that for a very, very long time. Why ever? I didn't know any better. It's a good point you brought up. All right, Tom, thank you. Good luck, Dave. Let us okay. know what happens. I love those follow-up calls. I love them. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Esther on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. This is my first time calling. I've been listening for about three months now. I have a situation. I have a boyfriend that we've been together for about a little over two years, and he has a son. And we've been talking about maybe getting married. And to be honest with you and my friends, some of my friends, I don't really want to get married. I'm not in a hurry to get married, but I can't um, break up with the guy. I what do you tried. mean you can't? What do you mean you can't? I, I've I've attempted to a couple times and in every so are situation. you being held hostage in his basement? Are you uh, handcuffed? <laughs> of course not. But what do you mean you can't? It's difficult in that I get a guilt trip every time I do. What <laughs> What do you have to be guilty about? <laughs> well, I I've gotten very attached to the guy, his son, and his family. Yeah, but the point is, you're not ready to get married, period. He has no choice. You tell him that uh, he has no choice. You'll get married if and when you're ready, and not any minute, not a minute sooner. Uh, that's true, and I've, and I've told him to, to hold on and to wait until I want to get married. And if, if, wait, I wait, do want, if, if you want to get married. If, if I, if, you're not even sure you want to be married. 
That's that's true. I'm still I'm still figuring that stuff out, but I figure I have several years to figure that out. But um, well, not according to him, because he'd like you to get in there and start feeding his kid and uh, ironing the clothes. So, do you think that there would be any any way that if we do get married sometime later on down the line, that he would somehow get me to pay for any of his kids in any way? Do you or, make more? Do you so you make more money than he does? You say right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, of course you're going to be paying just like any guy. Oh, oh okay. By the way, oh. does he does he have full custody? Actually, that's something we're working on. When I met him, he did not have any custody of his kids. We're have... working on? Why are you working on it? Well, because uh, as far as I know, I'm in a relationship with him, and I care about the guy and his Yeah, but kids. it's still, that's his kid, his problem, his ex. And I might add, uh, by the way, let me point out, if he's paying child support, which I imagine he is, mm -hmm. why... <laughs> uh, we've heard too many of these stories. Once you get married, they're going to consider your income as part of the household income. And you know what that means? He'll be paying more child support. He'll be paying more child support because... Which means you'll both be paying it. Oh, I didn't know that. If, um... What if we get custody of his son, though? And by we, I mean him. Well, uh, there's, there's no guarantee of that. I wouldn't count on it. Tom Likes Show.